catch Samoas and Sheikas. The brightest minds from across the country talking about what makes them tick. This is Rock the Talk on IndigoMusic.com. Well, welcome back to yet another edition of Rock the Talk right here on IndigoMusic.com. And of course, this is where we talk to the who's who in Bangalore, nationally and everywhere. And uh, right now I have a very special guest on the other side, closer to home, uh, Indian badminton player and Olympian Ashwini Pannappa is joining us at Rock the Talk. Ashwini, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, my pleasure. All right, so first up, Ashwini, tell me how is uh, 2020 looking for you and how, how have you been handling this pandemic? Well, it's been pretty interesting because um, I started the year uh, not actually playing tournaments because I had an injury. And right. then I got better from the injury and then in March, end of Feb, I actually started playing. I got two tournaments in and then we had the lockdown. So it's been, <laughs> it's, it's been kind of crazy. But okay. at the same time, I mean, since I was recovering from an injury and I was playing because yeah. we had the Olympic qualifiers. Right. So we had a couple of tournaments left. So, I mean, it was very unexpected, but I guess it is what it is, you know. Yeah. We, um, I mean, you couldn't have done anything about it. Right. But having said that, it's been very interesting because I had, like, for the first time in years, I've had time to spend in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. But then the funny part was it was just inside the house and not really going out. So it was pretty strange, right. but right. I love being in Bangalore nonetheless. All right. But then I guess uh, considering you had all this time, I think you're fully recovered now. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, I got a lot of time to spend on my injury, recover, work on rehab. Okay. And yeah. All right, great. Um, also, let's just go back to how things started actually for you because your father played hockey and you decided to go the badminton way. So, um, how did that happen? For me, badminton happened because my parents happened to put me into this sport. It wasn't like I told them that, hey, I want to play badminton. It didn't start out like that. It right. was more because there was a badminton court right next to the place where my dad worked and it mm -hmm. seemed I mean, easy for mom and dad to like juggle their work and take me for practice. And I think when I was a kid, they felt like I had a flair for badminton. Uh -huh. so hence, I was put into the sport. All right. Amazing. And um, so you took to it like immediately or was it like, I mean, did you have a few favorites when it came to sport or was it always badminton? It's always been badminton ever since I started training. Because when I started training at the age of about eight and a half, eight, eight and a half, the coach right. that I went to, he was very particular about my basics and making sure that the minute I started training, I wasn't even playing with my parents so that I didn't get influenced in terms of strokes. Right. So it's only been badminton and no other sport ever since. All right. So you've had uh, a few very big victories and you've always been a doubles player, Ashwini. So um, is, is, is that, was there a moment in your career when you decided to go the doubles way or um, how did that happen? Well, I have been fond of doubles, but I started off as a singles player, so it was singles and doubles for me. But it just so happened that my doubles performance was better than my singles performance. So right. when I got to the national camp, I was chosen as a doubles player rather than taken in as a doubles player rather than a singles player. Right. So that's right. sort of how the shift happened. Okay, fine. And uh, you did mention that you had a few injuries and then you've been spending a lot of time indoors. And so I'm guessing there's been absolutely no practice uh, during the pandemic or are you ready to get back on court whenever you're expected to? I mean, the first two months when the lockdown was at its peak, of course, it was staying at home and not really training. Right. Then um, the end of May, once things opened up in Bangalore, around I think May 25th was when I think courts opened up. So since then, I have been playing and uh, gradually, of course, practice has picked up and it's more or less back into full form training. All right. And of course, right now, there's a lot of cricket going on with the with the IPL. Um, I just wanted to ask you, I mean, with badminton, I guess, playing without a crowd, without an audience, I don't think that's uh, uh, people, badminton players are ready to do that, right? Just like all other sports are expected to. Of course. I mean, I don't think we have a choice right now. As long as we have tournaments, I think that's good enough. Because not having tournaments means that, I mean, if we don't have fans, it's okay as long as we have matches. It's better than not having matches at all. So, most right. of us are fine with it. Alright. And um, 
Also, uh, badminton in India right now, I think, is in uh, very good hands. It's picking up. In fact, especially women's badminton with the likes of uh, Saina Nawal and P. V. Sindhu. So, do you think anything more needs to be done? Because in our country, of course, it's always cricket, but uh, other sports don't get a lot of attention. But you think that's changing, at least for badminton? Most definitely, it has changed a lot over the years, especially with the performances of Sindhu, Saina, and our past performances in doubles with Jwala. And I think doubles on the whole is also picking up along with singles, but there's a long way to go. Right. And um, yeah, I think we are headed in the right direction because badminton, unlike a lot of other sports, we do get funded and we are looked after well. So we're quite fortunate that way. All right. And um, also, uh, maybe a personal lesson that you've actually learned from the sport that you'd want to share. I think for me, it's been just learning and growing because. Over the years, especially in the recent years, I've realized that there's no end to learning and there's no end to growing. And right. that's pretty amazing, especially when you have been playing the sport for years. It's mm-hmm. amazing how you can still learn and you can still grow. Right. And of course, working hard, I mean, that's and that's what everyone else says, of course. But then there's a lot of truth to it. Working hard definitely helps and definitely pays off. Right. And uh, would you like to maybe uh, a few words on what your fitness uh, routine is like? You know, everybody wants to know how how hard to uh, people in sport train. So what is it like for you? Do you have a routine? Do you have a diet? Uh, what's your regular daily routine like when you are playing? Uh, well, since I have been in Hyderabad for a long time now, training at the National Centre, we've had a routine where we wake up and then we have sessions from about 8.30 till about 11.30 at times. And sometimes okay. it's split into two, from 6 till about 8.00. And then again, 10.30 till about 12. And then an evening session. But now that I am in Bangalore, my routine's a bit different. So I've got like gym in the morning and then followed by on-court sessions. But then my gym training is very different from someone who is interested in fitness because everything revolves around the game and what's needed for my game. So if I'm working out in the gym, it is keeping my game in mind, my body in mind and what's needed on court for me. So it's quite different. It's not that I'm just doing exercises for the heck of doing exercises to stay fit. Right. But it is with the purpose being that it helps me on court. All right. All right. Um, so Ashwini, it's also time for a quick um, rapid fire round right now. Okay. So before we let you go. So quick questions. And of course, you know how rapid fires work. So I'm just going to shoot and you can give me quick answers. Yeah. Uh, your yeah. best childhood memory. <laughs> going to Coog. Um, one piece of advice you will never forget. To enjoy myself on court. Okay. And um, would you want to reveal who gave you that advice? Well, I was working with Ashlesh when I was a kid. And at that point of time, I hadn't really won a tournament. Right. So then he kind of taught me that enjoying myself on court really would help me play well. And okay. it did. And it's something that's stuck ever since. All right. Um, a pre-match ritual? Ah, a good warm-up. All right. Uh, post-match celebration. I think for me, it's just relaxing and having uh-huh. fun with my teammates. All right. And your most uh, memorable moment during your career? The 2010 Commonwealth Games, because it was in Delhi, in front of our hometown, home crowd. All right. Um, one thing you would actually like to change about yourself? One thing I'd like to change. Probably loosen up a bit more. <laughs> All right. And uh, one thing that you absolutely love about yourself, maybe that you just would never change for anything. My curiosity to learn. All right. Something you never ever get bored of? Playing with puppies and dogs. Oh, all right. Well, I'm trying not to right now. I have a cat and a dog running around my living room. But okay. Uh, <laughs> your, last, your last question before we let you go. It's not a, uh, it's not a rapid fire question. It's just any message or a word of advice for young and upcoming Indian badminton players? I'd say probably be curious, keep learning. There's loads of content online, watch matches and see things that you can incorporate into your game. And yeah, I mean, it's not like in the past where we couldn't watch matches. Now there's a lot of access. Even if it's not live, there's loads of videos online. So you can always watch and learn and get better, even if you don't have access to a badminton court. Right, great. 
Ashwini Panapa, thank you so much for joining me today on Rock the Talk. See you. Thanks. Bye. Right. Thank you. Bye. Well, that was uh, Ashwini Panapa, Indian badminton player and Olympian, right here on Rock the Talk. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, we'll be back with a lot more.